So before I begin, I just want to apologize to anyone who hates Leonardo DiCaprio because I am about to rant for a solid five minutes, maybe less, maybe more, on why I think he deserves to be nominated and win for Best Actor at the Oscars this year. So, I mean, if you don't like him, then you should probably leave. JK, man, don't leave. See that right there, what I just did? Like, ten people stopped watching this video because I'm creepy, but it's okay. Here we go. First off, let's talk about Leo's latest movie, The Revenant. I've not been able to do an official review of it, except I did on Instagram. On Instagram, I said, just from the trailers alone, everyone knew this movie would be special. So does Leo live up to the Oscar hype? Absolutely. This movie is not only carried by Leo, but Tom Hardy gives his best performance yet. Where it will get some people is the times throughout when it does slow down, but I feel like that's necessary for the emotional moments, and it gives the director, this guy, his chance to show what he's made of. All in all, this movie has Oscars written all over it, from best picture to best cinematography. Not my personal favorite film of 2015, but it will easily be in my top five. Should you guys watch this movie <laughs> as soon as possible? And my final grade was an A minus. I mean, yeah, there's there's some flaws in the movie, such as everything that he survives in the movie is literally impossible to survive in real life. Not not everything, some of the things. But of course, there's a counter argument to that that says this movie was based on a true story. And another flaw in the movie is that it's occasionally hard to tell how much time passes between scenes. I mean, is it days? Is it weeks? Is it months? But one could argue that the director decided to leave it up to the viewer, and it's our choice to decide how much time passes. Look, we don't know, but all that I know is that that movie was absolutely fantastic, and my final score was an A-, minus, which isn't perfect. I understand that, everyone who enjoys The Revenant more than I do, but hey, an A- minus is a pretty good score. And what movie is perfect? That one's pretty darn close. <laughs> It's a very open to interpretation kind of movie, and I really enjoy that. I don't like being fed everything on a silver platter when I go and watch a movie. That's just the way that I am, and that's the way most people are. I like to walk into a movie and occasionally use my brain. Right, Transformers? Right? You mindless action filled train wreck of a series, Michael Bay. Some could argue that Tom Hardy gave his absolute best performance of his career. Of his career! He nails the accent and uses his eyes to act, which that's something that Tom Hardy does very well. He uses his eyes to tell the story. This provides a very well fleshed out villain that has motivation for doing what he does in the movie, and those are the best kind of villains. I talk with my hands a lot, so I'm going to be doing this. And granted, I have not seen every movie that all the nominees for Best Supporting Actor were in, but I'm telling you right now, Tom Tom Hardy should be right up there. Him and Stallone, man, they're gonna be fighting each other for it. Coming for you, Tom Hardy. That was the worst Rocky impression I have. Wow. When you look at why Leo deserves to be awarded for his performance in this movie, there's so many different aspects of the movie that you can just pay attention to. The biggest argument that I've heard against Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie is that there's a very limited amount of dialogue. And when he does speak, it's very disgruntled and it's hard to understand. Kinda like Tom Hardy in almost every movie he's ever been in. I'm just saying. But story-wise, this is something that had to happen? My goodness, this guy gets his throat slit. Slit. If he just patched it up and then continue to talk normal, well, I don't think this movie would be nominated for Best Picture, because that wouldn't make any sense. Well, honestly, how can a character that barely talks get nominated for Best Actor of the Year? For an actor to be an actor, his performances should not rely completely on quantity, but quality. It's the words that his characters say, and how he says them is what's important, and not how often he talks or how he talks. I guess it would be how he talks. The train's starting to go off the rails a little bit. But that's the thing, it's not the amount of lines that he has in this movie that determines whether or not he has a good performance. It's how he presents himself, and he uses his body and his eyes, just like Tom Hardy does all the time in almost every movie that he has that tells the story. Would you stop doing construction? They wake me up every morning at 7 o'clock because they're building some kind of dorm over there. Oh, college is too much. It's too much. What he puts his body through in this film is incredible. If you go and look at the behind the scenes and what he actually did for this movie, it'll blow your mind. How he makes every audience member feel for him just through subtle looks and body language. There are not that many actors that can do what Leo does in this film. Now some people have said and are going to say that this gives him a disadvantage to Fassbender or to Redmayne because their line delivery and their characters are portrayed so closely to what they were based off of. But think about that. They had someone that they could look at 
that and say, well, I'm gonna mimic the way that he walks and the way that he talks. They all have examples on how to play their roles. Now, granted, I'm not taking anything away from their performances because they're all fantastic and they got their characters down to a T, but they had novels and they had people that they could look at and read and watch and base their characters off of. Now, granted, The Revenant is a true story, but Leo had no one to look at and say, well, I can do that, that, and that. And yeah, he did have a book that the movie was based around, but because of that limited dialogue, he didn't have a lot to pull from. His performance was visual. His performance came mostly through his pain and his suffering. And usually that's not something that you can mimic from somebody else. That is something that as an actor, you have to allow yourself to find. And I don't really know what Leo was channeling, but he found it. You just look at what this guy does on screen and, and you're blown away. And the pain that was subtly coming through his voice when he was trying to tell the others what had happened and nobody could understand him and nobody was listening, it's an incredible feat. And so Something that not many actors, there are actors that can do it, but not many actors can pull it off the way that Leo does and make it so believable. I believe that to take the title of best actor, you have to give a performance that is so believable and so captivating that it can make people sit back and say, wow. To sit back and say, without that actor in that movie, that movie would not have worked. And as good as Damon was in The Martian, and as incredible of a performance that Fassbender gave as the founder of Apple, I believe the movie that needed the performance that it got the most was The Revenant. Because there were only two movies that came out this year that completely, in my opinion, relied on one character's acting because he himself was in the movie by himself the majority of the film. And that was Matt Damon in The Martian and Leo in The Revenant. Fassbender had some pretty solid performances around him in the same scene at the same time. And so did Redmayne and so did Cranston. But if you look at just Leo and Matt Damon, they shared the screen with absolutely no one for the majority of the movie. And even though I like The Martian better than The Revenant, the performance, the performance that captured me more was Leo's. The Revenant could have easily been beautiful, but boring. It could have dragged. It could have had people who don't care about cinematography. It could have put them to sleep. And sure, Tom Hardy's character was great, but he wasn't in the majority of the film like Leo was. So it was really up to him to carry that entire movie. And because he was such an interesting character, that movie prevailed. And now it's tracking, and it's on pace to win a poop ton of Oscars. Y'all know what a poop ton is? It's a lot. And yeah, listen, I know some of you guys feel the same way about some of the other actors in the category, and that is completely fine. That is, that is the wonderful thing about movies. Movies are all subjective. They're entirely your opinion. If you like a movie that I don't like, and if I like a movie that you don't like, that's awesome. That only allows us to sit back and tell each other why we love that movie and why we love film in general. But man, I think it is about daggone time for Leo to win that Oscar. What do you guys think? Do you think Leo deserves that so coveted Academy Award? Or do you think it's Fastbender's time? Or do you think Redman should win it again? Do you think they'll ever find Matt Damon? Because for some reason, Hollywood keeps losing him. So if you disagree or any thoughts, concerns, rude remarks, leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to like this video if you want to. You don't have to. It's up to you. Just please be nice when you comment. Ah, just kidding. <laughs> you can do what you want. It's, it's your life. It's not mine. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me until the end of the video. 